asked more than once uh, about making your own campuses. It is cheaper and it's, it's better to make them yourself because you can actually make them any size you want, including round if you're good at stretching it. So I'm going to show you in a couple of few easy steps how to make it your own and um, right now I'm going to show you what you need. First of all, you're going to need canvas. I get this at the do-it-yourself store for about $12, a little less, and it's a, a 9 by 12 feet, it's medium grit, and it's a drop cloth, but it's a canvas drop cloth. The color doesn't particularly matter, they come in white too. Um, they come in three different courses, fine, medium, and coarse. I've painted on all of them. The coarse is a little bit too coarse, and fine, it's just kind of slick, but if you like it, you can use it. Um, I like a little bit of the tooth on my canvas, so when I dry brush, it actually does what it needs to do with dry brushing. Um, the medium is what I go for. So that's about $12. Now think about a pre-stretched canvas at the store that you buy. You know, um, they're way more expensive. For $12, you could get a 9 by 12 sheet for canvas. Um, what else you're going to need is wood. There's different types of wood, of course including the one in the morning and stuff like that. But this is um, just untreated pine that you can get, and they are 98 cents a piece. They come in uh, 10 foot lengths, and uh, this is what I use. It doesn't matter if it's treated or not, because you can always paint it. And if you paint it with a, with a good um, uh, uh, quality paint, it'll last forever. So this is what we're actually going to make the frame out of, and we're going to show you how to do that and put it together as well. Um, what you're going to need for that is a miter box to, and, a, and a saw, of course, a saw and a half or whatever you feel comfortable with to saw with. Pencil, something to measure with if you're not as good as I am. Real Vikings don't measure, we just put the shit together. A drill for uh, drilling pilot holes, that wood will split. Um, so you have to drill the pilot hole before you drill the um, screw and uh, you're going to need screws, and there's a ton of different types of screws out there, okay? The bigger you make your canvas, the longer you need screws you need. I tend to use two different types um, when, I, uh, when I make mine for the size, okay? When we're screwing our wood together, we actually um, use these type of screws. Um, these screws are, are just plain old screws, but remember, some of them will rust. So if you can't afford it and you're worried about rusting, get the galvanized or get the copper screws. Um, I've got three different lengths here, and these I use for the really big canvases that I make, like the 5x5 five five feet or even bigger if you want to. For the ones I'm going to make today, I'm going to use the smaller ones. These are just, I would say, about 2.5 inch. For the sides and then for the cross brackets that we're going to make, I'm going to use the ones that are actually just an inch. Uh, the bigger they are, the bigger the chance actually that your wood will split. So you got to be careful with that. Another thing that you will be going to need is a tacker. Not a regular uh, staple gun, but a tacker, which is heavy duty steel. And because um, we're going to uh, stretch the canvas with this on the wood. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to figure out how big we're going to make our canvas. I already know what I'm going to make. It's going to be a uh, 32 inches wide by uh, 25 inches tall because the picture that I'm going to paint on it is roughly square, but I'm going to elongate it a little bit. And uh, so first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to measure that out. I'm probably going to use two of those because I have to call, I saw the, uh, the cross brackets too. So let's go and do that right now. Right, once you know your dimensions, you um, you can do two things. You can either uh, cut it so the pieces of wood are flat and flush on top of each other. That's the way I like it. Or you can cut it at an angle. The reason why I don't cut it at an angle is because you can easily split the wood when you screw it all together. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to cut it flush. I'll put two pieces of wood on top of each other. Let's go and check that out. Right there. And I just measured it out. It's going to be 32 wide, uh, 32 wide. And I wanted to make it 30 high. So I make it 32 by 28. Because at that point, you have to deduct an inch from the width of the wood. So one piece 
that go underneath, and we got the big pieces that are going to go in between. So as you can see, right there, it's going to be roughly square. This is what I mean with the flush on top of each other. It's going to go like that with a cross bracket in between. The cross bracket in between is going to prevent it from tweaking and going everywhere. So that's going to be what we're next going to cut. That is going to be cut at an angle, a 45 degree angle that you then screw in between. So we've got our cross brackets and if you can see, you can clearly see it, they're not the same width. It doesn't particularly matter, it has to go in the back if you are very anal with that. You can make them all the same shape, that's or the same size, that's fine, but um, I'm not that worried. Two in, the, two, in the, two in the back, two in the front, okay, two in the top, two in the bottom, you're not even going to see the difference. Uh, the only thing you have to worry about is this is nice 45 degree angle, so it keeps your frame all tweaked. So let's go and see how it looks like when we put it together before we drill all the pilot holes. As you can see, we put it, we laid it out. Our table isn't big enough to actually show you the whole thing. It's sticking out on that part. But this is going to be the idea. Pilot hole going from here into there, and this is going to go in between. And then from there to there, we'll hold these two pieces together. And then we're going to use one of the cross brackets, and that's going to go in here. And if you're worried about it, you can sand it, paint it, and stuff like that. So this will hold it for tweaking. As you can see, even though it's a little bit bigger, I might put one in between, but it's going to be hard because uh, I need to be more brackets and stuff like that. I've made this size before, and I know for a fact that if you if you just use the little brackets in the corners, it should be fine. So little thing uh, about drilling, little thing about drilling is that you don't want to go all the way in. Uh, if you go in with drilling all the way then your screw actually will let go if your drill bit is too big. So only go in like halfway and be careful that you don't split your wood. <laughs> How double is that? But it's a valid point and just be careful with it when you do it. And if your wood still splits, you're using a too big of a drill bit. Just try a smaller one and try a uh, smaller screw. Alright, we've got all four nerves screwed and drilled and screwed and we're going to put in the cross pieces now. As you can see by itself it's already nice and strong. The only thing that it can do is tweak a little bit this way. So these cross pieces are going to help with that. And um, I'm going to put them in one by one. Pre-drill, screw it, pre-drill, screw it. And we're going to do that for all four corners. Once you build your frame and you have all the little cross bars and stuff in it, it's time to Put your canvas on the floor or any other big table that you want. And um, we're going to have to cut the canvas out. Um, if you're not completely sure about how you, if you're afraid if you're going to come up short or whatever, um, you can cut a little bit extra and then when you stretch it, you can just cut off the rest. That's, a, that's something I tend to do because I tend not to know, you know, use any rulers or whatever. So I'm just going to use my carpet knife and cut around it. I'm just going to leave it up here. This is right here that I know that it's going to fit. You know, so you flip it over like that. You can see that it fits. So even if I want, I can actually tuck it the other way around too. So I know that will fit and this will fit. So I'm just going to leave about the same amount of room here. I would say about two inches. Depends on the thickness. And um, I can actually get four of these canvases out of this big thing of canvas. So for $12 plus two pieces of wood, a couple of screws, you can make yourself have one hell of a lot of canvases. So let's go cut this. We're going to stretch it, and um, the most important thing is that you have to remember I said you got to go clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. The first thing you do is you flip it over on one of the longer sides and tuck it. There you go, so that one's in now. Don't go to either side, go to the other side. What I do is grab it, turn it around, like that. Stretch it all out again. And like that. So you kind of keep it a little bit looser. Kind of keep it straight in there too. And it, it'll wrinkle in the middle. You can, you, you have to like use your strength in your hands to take it out. So I'm going to pull just a little bit, not too much yet. 
Turn her over. Back Okay? Turn it to either side. Doesn't particular matter which one. Go this way. Okay? Find yourself a corner. Don't strip. Don't flip because you will flip loose over there. Back it. Okay? Turn it around. Pull it straight. Now you can pull just a little bit to it. You can see how much I've got left. That's alright. I can just trim it off whenever I want. There you go. Alright, now next time, now it's cut uh, one on all sides. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and find one in the middle. So one from the corner to there to the one that we already did. So we're going to turn it around. Okay, flip it back over because this is already tight. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to do it somewhere in between the old staple and the corner. So I'm going to go right here. And the corners are kind of simple. You just stretch it over. You don't have to stretch it anymore. Once your canvas has the drum sound, stop doing it. Alright, I'm just tacking it to the wood. And you kind of reverse fold this corner in like that. Okay, so what I did is you just push your finger in here and push this corner out like that. Okay, so you get a corner. Second. Remember, it's just going to be the back of your painting anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter much. You can actually put like a little trim on it if you want. And then when you go like this, you make sure that the corners are tight. Go around it. Second. It. There you go. And now we're going to go all the way around the corner. So again, just flip it over on one side. Reverse fold that corner in. Okay. And if you have too much, just take a pair of scissors to it and cut it off. Okay, flip it over. Now what I said, reverse fold and in. Uh, why I have extra campus all the way around is because when I ship it, I don't want it to get damaged. So the more campus is on it, the less chance of getting damaged. Okay, so reverse fold that corner in. And you get those nice pieces. Tuck it on there. There you go. Now, the last thing that I'll do is I'll go around and tack, tack, and tack this in. So, just turn the staple upside down. Make sure you don't staple through your canvas on the other side. That will be bad. And yes, I have done that. Once you're uh, done all the way around, it's nice and neat, nice and tight, you have yourself a canvas for It's just a simple map. $12 for a 9 by 12 canvas. And I paid about $6 for a whole stack of wood, some couple of screws, and some time and some, uh, some staples. That's it. So once you gesso this with an acrylic gesso with water, if you water it down, you let it dry, it actually shrinks some more.